will leave the Ash open this time around to block that one in immediately. And now it's about how the side of LGD it. I mean, right, theoretically, the Lushinami still being the highest value bot lane duo left open. Do you want to go towards that one? Do you want to maybe pivot into some type of, like, Jin lane or, you know, some other bot lane for your... So if you highlighted for LPC that seven that he leaned on, fully, even if it hasn't been anything that we've seen too frequently in the meta, that's, it was really only seen coming out a lot against Zare, some time out against Varus. Uh, Spell Shield Zare being incredibly valuable, but now it's going to be their time to show what they're able to do here. Well, they're just going to steal away the ADG momentum from uh, Arla and JJ's first couple of picks. Uh, like that, that strong mid lane that we got from Vobo. Scout or again could be Scout shoot. Any kind of direction that. So we get a bit more engaged. Bit of range. Lyric. As EDG. I mean this is Harry earlier. So you didn't have to leave. Probably taken five fans. Or we just rinse and repeat the usual. And get, get maybe a solo lap on the chase. Or that get plays. I wonder if solo lanes can leave the potential Lex to come through. Like we haven't seen Ash AD carry all that much. But had like five times. In roll, like at least that little bit of flexibility is still always there if you want to wait. And with them showing like Jace now, uh, you could always look to solo lanes. Let me see, Shaoshu hasn't played actually, neither one of LGD solo laners. Oh, it's strong. Hi, Shaoshu played it once, so I guess you don't need anything it's gonna go into, but like we said, actually seen it in the in the split. So with Sejuani locked in, you'd expect more melee answers. So things like the Yone, the Akali, uh, the Silas being there for mid lane, and then, you know, top of the plethora of options. We get a Kaisa lock in for leave. Like, gentlemen, that's a fun bottom line to play. I apologize. We're experiencing lag on our ends. And because I know there's a translating lag. through. It, it's, it's going at a snail pace. But you know, we can, if we sound like a rock. The thing. I'm I to actually hope. I, I, yeah, yeah I, I hope we sound like robots because, you know, it's always bad when, when the lag's just an art. People are like, what are the cast saying? It's like, you guys don't realize sometimes we are casting at like one one frame well, for every. Yeah. Exactly. No, I think Sorry. one pixel no. over like 10 seconds. You know what I mean? But, yeah, yeah. Uh, we see the Cassante now locked in from the side of LGD. So at least we know this will, this Jace will go back to the hands of Hai Chow. You once again have like a very solid uh, front line up in that top side. And Shaoshu had a tremendous early game, right? It was Meteor the one who set him up, but then he was able to follow through. He was able to find solo kills against Ala. He was able to keep delivering. So I like that they're banning away some of these these answers to the Cassante and also some champions that historically Ala has been known to be incredibly strong at. Things like the Fiora. Jack's already taken off the board by EDG themselves, so they, they don't have to worry about that one. Okay, so as we get it off the board, I mean, again, Fiora, we're looking towards those solo lanes. I see an AD carry ban on the side of EDG just to Throw out the pool a little bit here and put LPC in a corner. Uh, LPC last game, what was it? It was the Lucian, but everyone doesn't like the Lucian Nami bottom lane. We've seen enough of it. And Lyric, I'm just trying to find some Blitzcrank quotes just in case we need it. Uh, the, fav the favorite, of course, has to be a rolling golem. Gathers no rust. Um, or bone is a poor alternative. I hope we do sound still robotic, because then it'd be cool to have a Blitzcrank cast. You know what, Blitzcrank? Secretly OP, like Thresh at the moment. Just going to throw that out there. So hopefully we do get that at some point. But if we do sound human, all I can say to you, is there are limited options available? LPC, what has he played? Let me open my little tab. Mm, no, 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 no. We've talked about Civil already. Jin's there. Draven's been played a couple of times. Nami's been taken off the board. So no Lucian, which everyone loves. Everyone liked that. But Lyric, what goes well with this front line you built up? Yeah, definitely feel like, I mean, if they want to play range, like, have Jin available, and you can just use him as a bit of utility and play for your high shot. If you need damage, you've already highlighted things like the Draven able to come through if they wanted to opt into that lane and maybe look for an engaged support alongside it. So those are their two routes right now. Looks like they're going to go for the Jin one. So having that ulti to set up for, uh, you know, long-range engages, having the fall through from Maokai and Jace there to be able to deal the damage. And now for EDG, looks like Azir might be what Felipe is leaning towards in mid. Um, again, we still have things like the Akali available if they wanted to go with that and kind of match it with the Sejuani. And then when you're looking at topside, uh, Scion, Renekton, Camille, kind of are which about at me. Oh, yeah. Scion has been one of our go-to answers, especially when you're running against a lot of AD and a lot of, uh, I mean, again, very bursty, like, lethality-heavy lethal champions. It's like running more frontline does make a lot of sense. 
Mm -hmm. And ooh, are we gonna get to see Elise in mid? Oh, good point. Or is Arla like Flandre and plays Sejuani top? I think we're past <laughs> that a little bit, so maybe not. Maybe it is. Yeah. Uh, you had a good question of, of the Lee Sin. It's sad we don't see it. We get Fofo on Azir instead. So I guess some kind of standardized lane. And so you're using the Sejuani a lot more in terms of just like general engage in team fights and being able to set up like front to backs and, and engages rather than like the pairing with the soul lanes that we typically see it, it used for so often, right? So very strong front to back for the side of EDG. Also a lot of dive. Both Sejuani and Scion can help set up for the Kai setup to be able to get in on mm -hmm. that back line and just take out the Jin. Uh, always be looking for those opportunities, you know, once like curtain calls open, like it's Shannon Crystal Arrow into Kai just just it jumping in and deleting him. To where for LGD, it's about, it's kind of like a reverse, but not to the same extent, right? It's about Shao Shu and Meteor kind of playing that front, front line, allowing the damage to come off from Hai Chao and LPC, and then looking for the re engage. The one difference they have is they have a lot more like long range pick potential, right? You can use like open curtain call, throw out the Maokai ultimate. G actually, Lyric, their schedule is so good. They have AL after this. Then they have OMG, FTX, TT. I think EDG are gonna finish 14 and two. Yeah, we've seen EDG already play against the top dogs. And that's why maybe people who are just coming into this pregame tour are like, why are they hyping up EDG for, for beating LGD? Like, LGD are 4-7. Yeah. and seven. They should be expected to win. It's not just isolated them winning that game. It's the fact that mm -hmm. they've looked great this split. They're on a win streak right now. They've taken down LNG and Weibo in their two most recent wins. Two other teams, LNG right now, sitting at the top of the table. And Weibo, sure, Weibo have been like incredibly up and incredibly down, but still a team that has the talent to be able to contend with anyone. And EDG have just been making it look, I guess not necessarily easy, but but it's been it's been confident wins for them. It's, it's wins yeah. that, that make you believe in this team. And you can see how they play when they're ahead. You can understand how they play when they're behind. And it really looks like this five-man unit is just in sync. <laughs> Easier than expected, right? Again, it was such a surprise, but still a great side. Game number one will be real. First 10, 15 minutes was LGD favored. EDG getting a little bit sloppy up in that top lane, but the comeback was insane and uh, just kind of showed the class of this team. As We'll keep our eyes on bot, though, because the different style of lane, guys. Jin versus Kaiser feels nice as an off change. Uh, Leave had a lot of champions banned against it again, but LPC, a lot of resting on him in, in this game number two. Sleeping Maker already getting some good trades here against Jin Zhao and LPC. This time around, I also feel a lot better about, uh, you know, last time we had like a very stark disparity in comps, right? One that wanted to mm -hmm. kite back and, and one that wanted to look for the all-in. This time, EDG's comp yeah. is a lot more like fluid and, and well-rounded. You have opportunities to engage. You have range coming out in the mid lane. You have pick tools like the Eugene and Crystal Arrow. So you have a lot more avenues to be able to play from. So I have even more confidence in EDG this time around to where LGD Again, we're questioning damage as the game goes on, so we definitely want to be seeing them uh, find find advantages early. Maybe not necessarily right in laning phase, a lot a lot more uh, once ulties come online at level 6, and we can start seeing things like the Curtain Call uh, really start influencing the game, things like the Maokai really start influencing the game, and then you're putting a heavy burden on Chow this game to be yeah. the one to be able to take over. So laning phase is going to be as important as always. Deadly Flourish connect after the little folk song grenade from Jin Zhao. But the trade is reciprocated yet again. Push in from Levin Mako as you can see now as well. Meteor's hovering on the edge of this blue buff. Thinking about if he can find anything bot, but Jeje yeah, has made the same path down on the bottom side. And he's going to be there in a hair's breadth if anything goes wrong. So lanes will continue playing out pretty calmly for the time being as I want to point out, speaking of lanes, I mean, Fofo's already having a great start here in mid. High shell behind like three, four CS already. And he's got it back. Fofo just doing a great... I mean, if there's one champion I do associate with Fofo, it is easier, right? Time and time yeah. again throughout his career, leaning on this pick. Most played champion in the LPR right now, doing a great job with those soldiers to find the poke opportunities. So High shell does go for the recall, coming back. Tier Longsword in pocket. 
So right now, just gonna be playing to stack that up and, and try to find an impact in the mid game, right? That, that's what LGD are angling for. We said they want to find an advantage. Doesn't necessarily need to be now, but once we start to see like first item spikes online, that's when they really need to get going. So just gonna hope to find opportunities until then to get them in a place where they'll be strong later. Like this Meteor flash in the twisted vent. Good bramble smash, good as well. Meteor takes another turret shot, but it's not enough to kill him. And that first blood over to LGD. Meteor had an insane game one in the first 10 minutes. He was ganking left, right, and center, finding a lot of really yeah. odd times and making it work. This time around, just clears towards bot, has the patience to wait around, and they guarantee a kill going over. Uh, not to LPC, but still going to get it on Jinjiao. And even if we get the Heimer closer to his break points uh, fast, and we've been seeing he's been doing a lot of damage in these early trades. Xiaoshu. Again, same thing. LGD's early game, just going well all round. And I will say last game, you know, the only lane that was really suffering was High Chows. Uh, Fofo had a bit of a CS lead through mid and was just chilling and breezing his way through to a bit of a gold advantage. This time around, you can say the same thing. 10 CS advantage up in the top side. Arla's getting some of the CS denied as well. That's a third one. And that's a fourth one. So Arla going to sit on 27. Shouts are going to clear out this wave. And even though he can TP back in Lyric, it's just great to see Xiao Shu firing again through this laning phase. Yeah, again, Xiao Shu really has just been so, like I'm, I'm excited to see where this guy goes in the future. Yeah. Uh, just w with how promising the first split he's shown because coming from LDL, we've seen a lot of times with, like players. It's usually hit or miss, right? You either come in and you have like performances like like Wayward did, uh, you know, towards the start of the year last time. You're like, oh my god, this is insane. Or you kind of come in, people like Captain and mid lane for TT, where there's a lot of hype. And like maybe had they been given more time, like like Forge had many splits and got to improve, they could be oh, there. Yeah. But you know, it's one or the other. So getting to see Shashu come off to a great start in his first split it is uh, what you love to see. It's gonna get flipped back here. Ulti's gonna come out all out again. Arla, rinse and repeat, but this time he has an escape and stopped out, but Shashu still owns this lane. But remember. Arlo just TP'd back in. Lyric, he now has no ulti if he needs to back again, so he's forced to stay here. Yeah, Xiao Shu's still gonna have command and control of this laning phase. I wanna bring our attention down to bot, assuming it's, I don't think a dive should be able to happen in this, this lane with the fact that there's no ultis available, but look at bot lane, four members of LGD actually posturing down there. It looks like Dragon's gonna come on through, EDG not even gonna be able to have a response, so, you know, this early game going a bit awry isn't the end of the world for EG. We mentioned that they have like a great front line as the game goes on. You have a going to be able to shut a ton of damage. Hobo has been able to find a meaningful lead. So not the end of the world for EDG. Just nice little, we'll, we'll say the icing right now is being made for LG. Yes. The icing on, on the cupcake of victory. Hey, they didn't have a dragon first time around last game. And that now gives a barrier in case they get this crazy steal again on EDG's side. So. LGD just question. stopped the eyes crossing the T's. What flavor of icing do you think LGD would be uh would be made? Well, I hate cake, right? So I'm probably the wrong person to ask about this. People go, you oh, hate cake? you hate cake? Dude, I love ice cream cake from Macca's and I love cheesecake. Both of them aren't real cake. Wait, wait, wait. Cake is too crummy ice cream cake in Australia? Yeah, don't don't you have a Macca's ice cream? With Macca's birthday parties, you'd get an ice cream cake. It's the best you thing know ever. <laughs> I gotta be real, you might hate cake, and I love cake. I hate ice cream cake, so I don't uh, think I would know if Mac said ice cream cake. I don't, know, just... way, I, I don't know why I, you hate, how can you hate I, ice cream cake? I'm not a big fan of cold things in general. It's cold weather, snow, ice cream in general, ice in general. I'm just, I'm just cold, cold is bad. Uh, not always, man, not always, dude. I love eating ice cream when it's like five degrees as well. If only Sydney got to that temperature, I'd be eating ice cream all the time. I love freezing death Ice cream death is better Kern call, this turn call. His lead's gonna die. He has no cleanse, but he does have the flash. Fourth, a healed up maker, a real bro as he gets out. But good to see that LGD's lanes are actually going red hot this game too. And it's something you wouldn't have expected of LGD. Like not only the fact that they're 4-7, and seven, and again, like the Song Game 1, have, have these promising performances. It's the fact that it's in the early game. It's in the laning phase where typically uh, players who are like being brought in, players like LBC, players like Shadow Shu, High Chow, who's relatively new. That's where they're not able to contend, but that's where we have been able to see them hold their own so far in the LPL. We can see now Harold gonna go Ooh. over to Meteors. <laughs> A lot of like little quick trades coming out for both sides. Yeah. But for LGD, you would expect them to want to use this.
probably down towards the spawn side. Like, you've already gotten two plates up towards top lane. You can see Ala running there now. So I guess you could open up that lane, but I don't know if, like, getting more gold on the Shaoshu or opening up the map really does that much for your competition. So, uh, them setting either, like, high Chao up for success and trying to get that one down, or using it to really start breaking open bot lane, I feel like would be the smarter play, but Meteor... He's in trouble. Now. Ala is in the middle of the field. He's just burned the ulti as well. You see a nature's grass fly through on the right hand side of your screen. And you know that Meteor's now here yet again. The bounce house for Ala. Surviving for a while, but now Kasante does damage. The flip dodged away from Ala's really trying, but Ghost has popped too. How long can he run? And the answer right there in front of you yet again here as Shao Shu won't be a solo kill this time, but he yet again is cleaving Ala in the early game. In game one, Shao Shu's advantage kind of stemmed from jungle intervention, right? Then he was able to like use that small advantage for himself and be able to win it hard. This time around, sure, the gank is what just gave him the kill, but Shao Shu mm -hmm. has been just commanding this lane. 30 CS lead so far. He's denying more minions. Ala still doesn't have TP to get back. He just ulti to lane. Like, every time Ala comes to lane, Shaoshu, Shaoshu, now Shaoshu and Meteor, able to find ways to capitalize. Look at that. 2.8k 2, 2 to 4k for Shaoshu, already going to pick up the Jack Show. And the, the worst part is that if you go to Woolworths, you can't get McDonald's ice cream cake. Like, they just don't sell it anymore. You can only get the Freddo one, or you can get the, um, it's like a Cadbury one as well, which I think is Freddo too. But as I go to shopping, Lyric, Cadbury Freddo Cake or Peter's Ice Cream Cake, like they're similar, but it's not the same as the Macca's one. And so, I don't know if anyone's out there can send me a DM. It's not in their dessert menu. And let's be real, the ice cream McDonald's doesn't work anyway. Uh, I don't know <laughs> if you have the same problem at Lyric. Dude, no, do, that's do you have true, the same that's issue? Everywhere. That's true everywhere, brother. Everywhere I've oh. been. I've been everywhere in the world McDonald's ice cream doesn't work. Oh my god, like, I, I just don't understand it. It's honestly as rough as getting solo killed by Cassante. Like, both things go hand in hand here as Herald gets shot towards mid. 30 seconds towards Dragon, JJ interrupting. It's gonna be a permafrost, but Popo has the ulti. Slide in, baby! But he gets the flash instead. Meteor's out. And meanwhile, the Wait. bottom lane leads just ulti in melee range. Xin Zhao is now dead, and LPC goes wham, bam! Ooh. Number four, number four, where is he? Where is she? I gotta well, say, even out. though both find kills, the fact that Leave is one who goes down on one side, Juju on the other, LPC now gets pushed in the wave. He might even get the threat to play. I don't. I think he sees that Sejuani's coming down, so I guess not too much going to be able to gain or be denied off the back of this. But still, you'll take this every time as the Jin. We're going to see the replay of what went down. Both bot lanes wanting to follow up with the engage in mid, and it sets up. Uh, the Root lands, able to follow on through. Jinjiao getting a lot of key damage down with those turrets. And then LPC fork shot online. The ulted turret's still there. Just sets up for that kill to come on through. So, so great job by Jinjiao to really be the one to set that up with the damage. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we saw LPC the one hitting the skill shot as well to, to guarantee it comes through. I do believe the grenade came out first, but... Uh, yeah, LGD's bot lane having a much better, better showing this time around. Look. This time around, when it needs to be said that, you know, the poke damage that comes out, you know, the pick that comes through, the lead that needs to be found has to be there for LGD. It is a good sign. They're 2,000 gold up just about again here before the laning phase really ends. But Dragon's now live. EDG have reset. They're here first. They've got the push in. JJ sitting in river waiting for Rift Herald's daughter. And as she goes down, now the AoE... Actually, the AOE from the, the blue Scorch Pup, it's not Scorch Pup, what is it? Iceborne Sun. Something like that. It's the blue one, whatever. The pet. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know what's blue one as well, yeah. I, I don't understand. Arrow comes oh, through, though. Oh. Fofo, the slide. That's strange. Why did the soldiers fly on the other side? I guess he used it late as uh, Fofo has to flash over the wall. Shashu's here, he gets run into, but I think Fofo's just gonna die. As High Chow looks for the auto attack, the range won't be enough, so he goes to Hammer. And now you need to get a pick off the back end. They get the Dragon as well. EDG, things ain't looking good here in Game 2 as well. And we're getting to a point where EDG are going to need to chill out, leave, chill out, leave. Oh, here you go. Curtain call. One, two, three, and four flushed away from. And the last moment, leave survives. So, you know, I was saying I don't like icy things, but EDG need to, they need to enjoy the snow, put the feet back, eat some ice cream, get a defensive vision line down, True. and, you know, stop, like, prevent 
EDG gave over that fight, right? EDG were the one looking for the pick to set up for Dragon. And like, you can understand it, Enchant Crystal Arrow comes out, they have the vision here. They want to be able to find this, but like you said, huh. I, I mean, Ulti doesn't follow through. I believe High Shot, the Flash timing, mean, even regardless, had it yeah. come on through. And then Fofo, having nowhere left to go, he's going to be able to go over with the fact that him not having any cooldowns left open after going for the play. And uh, yeah, this is where LGD's comp is really going to start spiking things like the Yomu's coming on through. We have Rylai's now picked up for Jinjiao. And for EDG, we highlighted their front line and how hard they're going to be able to take down. But LGD have a very respectable front line too in Chaoshu. Yeah. And you're going to need both to have some items under his belt before it's really going to get easy to whittle these members down. There's just something about LPL members that have Xiao in their name that they end up being, you know, top tier. Xiao Hu, Xiao Shu. Xiao Shang had some banger games on EDG. Xiao um, Wei Xiao was the top player in LCS. Oh, he came yes, from LPL. And, yes. Who else we got? Who else was small? You know, again, Xiao meeting small in, in Mandarin, guys. If you don't already get that. Who we else have, we, have, uh, that was Xiao? we have? He hasn't. He hasn't debuted yet, right? But TTF Xiao Hongren, which you know, a lot of people oh, yeah. are incredibly hyped for him to, to make his up. stage debut one point. Wei Wei Xiao, great AD carry of you know before our time, but still has Xiao at the end of his name. I feel like we're forgetting some, but there there are uh, many Shaos. Is Shao Shu? Oh, Shao Long Bao, ulti from Popo. Let's not forget XLB Shao Long Bao is his name. We're gonna keep going. There's surely we're, one we're missing. There is, but for now we're gonna focus on LGD potentially not missing out on this Herald. JJ Smite's about to be up. So okay, I was gonna say they might try to bring it down to just a smite steal, not actually look for an engage. But the fact that they commit the Shao Shu TP here is what makes EDG say, "Hey, we've gotten enough. We made it so Kasante won't be able to keep up this insane amount of pressure bot side." But Fofo did TP bot just now to get this wave in. I don't think he should really be able to get any pressure on the turret because they know Shao Shu's making their way back down. So now just gives Fofo a bit of a window, make his way in, into his own jungle, clearing out these camps. It seems like EDG are now realizing, "Hey, like we do need to." take your foot off the gas a little bit, play for some of these item spikes to come through, as we can now see Leandri's Kraken Slayer being picked up by their carry duo. Oh, yeah. Still not matching uh, the potential power on the other side. I believe Haichao? Haichao should He's also uh, be either on or back or pretty close in the back to be able uh, to finish up his first <sighs> item, so LGD going to be able to keep going forward with the, their momentum as we see him recalling now. I'm going back to 2021. I found TT Xiaopeng at the time. Banger. And I also remember Ooh, we, we had another. I miss Xiao Peng. Dude, it was great. Just side note, Xiao, there was another Xiao Hu, but H U instead of. Um, uh, hang on, no, that's the current one. That is the Xiao Hu. <laughs> um, there, was a, there, was, I, there was another. No, because it was, it was Xiao Shu versus Xiao Hu. That's why I'm getting confused. Oh, I'm like, oh, yeah, there was one called H U. That's literally the current one. Uh, guys, oh wait, people. there apparently was just a player called Xiao. I don't know if you already said that one. Oh, was there? There was apparently a player called Xiao Two. Um, That's the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, Xiao Sheng? I remember that. Dude, I, yeah, I said that. EDG's top Xiao laner. Bai? Oh, Xiao Bai? Xiao, that was a top Xiao laner as seven? well. Oh, there's a Xiao Seven in the LDL right now. That's right. There's a lot. Okay, you know, we, we oh, uh, uh, this will be the last one. Shao Sao Bao. I remember. Oh we yeah, okay, the good one. I think okay. you Leave. capped it off because uh, the pick on the Jin Zhao. Close call. Leaf run in. Ran into his heat. Catch the close. Oh, he's got flash. This. It's turning into a fight. Meteor jumps in. Leaf tight the wave. He's caught it up and dead. Jeff yeah, flashes out too. LGD on the chase. And Spofo gets out in the nick of time, but 30 seconds till the dragon. And once again, EDG. What are you cooking? We actually need to stop getting derailed because LGD is showing us they have a real chance of just commanding this game so far. Almost getting the 3k gold lead. Harold is going to end up getting the charge mid one outright turn into a turret. But still, look at the pressure they're keeping up on box side. Completely littered with LGD's ward. Should set them up very nicely for a dragon. And Haishao not going to allow all of the finals to top side. And Shannon Crystal Arrow is about to be up, so maybe they look for a pick. Ulti out. Okay, Arla tried his hardest. He's trying to get past the turret, remember? That's Haichao's turret as he flashes away. In the meantime, no, more... Xiaoshu gets bottom side turret while Dragon goes down. I think they could have been more patient because Mako's arrow had just come up. Uh, and it seemed like maybe they were hoping if Arla connects with Ulti, they turn that into a Crystal Arrow. But if you're going to commit 
both Sejuani and, and Ash going top anyway, I think you can play that a little bit slower. Guarantee the CC to come through once Mako uh, is here and then try mm -hmm. to turn that into a pick. So EDG not going to find a kill, not going to find a third off of that just because of a, a, a bit of rush gameplay. I just feel like EDG, the second game, showing us the same mistakes from game one. But it's gone beyond. As we look at the replay again, let's just look at this. I mean, Leaf's been aggressive all series long as usual. But unfortunately, they just didn't have enough damage yet. No, and it's like you're saying. I feel like it's a bit worse than game one. The fact that a lot of it's coming down to EDG forcing these plays, not reading of, again, where members are, complete vision control for LGD in that Bossy River. Sure, they had vision of the Heimer specifically, but really no one else to be able to follow through. And then just overestimating the damage, like you're saying, to be able to take him out. So, to our last game, it was LGD doing a great job of like finding these picks in laning phase when players are locked to their lane and you are able to find, you know, create opportunities with ganks. So it's EG, the ones creating these, these fights. All right, just then out with Zoe this time. Lyric, you wanted to see a bit more patience. That was a good mitigated play. This time they do see Shaoshu in bot side. He's pushing out that wave. They see Jin catching waves in mid. So they know they have numbers. So a lot more of a calculated play here from EDG. And they're going to turn it into a top lane turret. They, they're covered in bots. LGD might be able to respond in mid as they rotated Shaoshu up. But we'll see here how confident Lee is to stay. Arrow who got him in to cleanse out. Deadly Flourish dodged away from Shaoshu taking no damage. Dude, run away from Kasate. Run away from Kasate. Shaoshu with the ult, he's still there, tries to jump back in. Meanwhile, the fight here, the knock and sue. Arla just nukes the Heimerdinger. Take that, science. As Shaoshu now in a one versus two, he's not going to be stunned up or slowed down. Leaves going to stand behind Frank the Tank with a bit of a milk tank vibe going what on at the going same on? time. Meteor's getting poked down, and LGD, don't do this. LGD, you're in control, you're in charge. Don't throw it all away now. We have action going on everywhere on the map. Poor Jinjao, man. LBC flashing out of the way of the ulti, as he needs to do, right? But leaving Jinjao just fodder for EDG to clean up. I'm sure that's... Is that... Yeah, so that's going to be the replay of what we're going to get. The arrow coming out, having to force the cleanse. And then leave. Again, so confident in where he's able to play. But look at Ala coming in. LBC, he has to flash away, but Jinjao has no flash because <laughs> of the previous engage we saw. Is that man... I mean, Jinjao just has nowhere to go. He, he is just going down. Uh, trying to rotate to answer the play, and he's gonna regret that. Gonna regret that you know, for at least the next 40 seconds. There's always those league cinematics, and they put like Galios in it, and Scions versus Aurelia, and it's like, oh, at least they're comparable. You know, the Yordles are very rarely in it. Imagine Hyman versus Scion in the cinematic. How would you take him seriously? Like, he puts a turret down, puts a big turret, and Scion just cleaves it in two, and <laughs> rampages into him. There's a reason Heimer Digger isn't in the cinematic, guys. He's um, he's a scientist, not not the biggest fighter. He plays from afar, and Zion runs into him as we just saw there. The dangerous world as the arrow follows through. Meteor's just ran into it. again. Arla is playing an ulti game now. He's blocking for Bofo as he stands there and lyric. Oh, look at this. this is a concern we had. No damage exactly. from Jin into the meat tank. Exactly. I was just about to say, we're getting to the point where Ala now has a couple items under his belt. We're getting to the point where he can just shrug it off. They're going to try to bait out this Baron and turn this into a fight. They still have engage shields coming out. Fofo has the Emperor's Divide. Let's try. Mako's going to space it out. He's burned double time. This is the process. No Baron steal. They go for the all-in. Shaku gets him over the wall. Leaves by himself and flashes back over. Needs his team. Somebody help the AD carry. He failed the flash like... Where is my team? Team! Kazante is doing his thing as Ala gets flipped around as well. Jin Zhao the next target, but Ala can't do too much. Xiao Xu with the solo carry, man. What is it with the Xiao's in the LPL and taking over games? <laughs> I love how he just looks so, like, just relaxed after that situation. Taking it down 4 0 and 3 on the Kazante. And now no Barons. No Barons to have to contend with on the side of EDG. You keep up your gold lead. You're going to break down more structures. And you're even going to come back on the map first for Drake. I got to say, the plan from EDG, I think, is solid. The problem is the execution because, look, they're all on different pages. Xiaoshu runs in and Fofo tunnels. Fofo's like, hey, I'm going to get on the back line. He goes one way. But 
now the other members of EG left in the rock in a hard place. They want to follow Popo, but it leaves uh, leave having to contend with the Cassante by himself. So the members quickly scurry back to try to help him out. Then Popo dies and Leave dies, and really their focus is just all over the place. Oh no, and now there's a mountain soul up for grabs. They're zoned out. Mako might die as well. Thank you for the mountain. Thank you for the music, and thank you for the contribution. Bye bye, Mako, and hello, LGD in game number two. Playoffs to be locked in by EGD with e e e G, excuse me with the series win, but LGD aren't giving it to them for free. And again, all of this off the back of I don't think the Baron play was bad. Like the Baron call, just. Fofo tunneling so, so hard is actually not going to run down the lead again. Leaf's caught out. He's got no summoners. Leaf's caught out with no summoners. All out again. He's stunned up by the Heimerdonger rocket. Weird grenade splashy thing. But LGD get another one. EG, what are you doing? Yeah, I mean, LGD. We're going to game three. I'll say it now. I don't know if I curse LGD and if I do, I'm sorry, but <laughs> just doing so well. well. Another both both pick foul. What are you and doing? This game, they have just looked so lost from the very start, right? Again, them giving over the lead. A lot of it was them looking for proactive plays, getting punished with the lack of vision, lack of setup, lack of power spikes coming through. Now LGD, I think, should be able to easily turn this into an inhib. Ala right now is in mid. I'm kind of surprised they don't feel more confident to stay. Sure, lead is coming back up, but I guess just the lack of ulties available. El El Jinja is still down for a little bit. But eh, Meteors is up, High Chow's, hi, mm -hmm. I mean, High Chow doesn't even need this, right? Can just keep the accelerate shock class, but yeah. going for the safe play, wanting to maintain their gold lead, and more importantly, I guess, get some more items under the line because they did have a lot of standing gold. Kales now finished up for Jin Zhao. We can see Xiao Xiao, I believe, only just picked up the components right now for his next item. Uh, what is that, Warden? Warden's Mail, Warden's Plate, something along mm -hmm. those lines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing. <laughs> the same thing. Warden's Mail. Um, yeah, there we go. Lyric, JJ is he caught out. He went in by himself. Arrow to save the day. Shoushu's just tattling down because with a Mountain Soul, he takes no damage. Now, Maokai ulti comes through as well from Meteor. It's just a Hail Mary being thrown left, right, and center at this point. It's like It's been confusing. <laughs> After all the praise yeah. we were giving them in the first game, like... Like, you know, I feel like the early missteps aren't aren't as bad because as we saw, they realized, hey, even if we give over a little bit of like a gold lead, it doesn't mean all too much. It really is just coming down to that one Baron fight that just gave such a huge swing to LGD, not only in terms of the Baron, but the fact that Death Timers were even so long at that point, Dragon was so soon, that it gave LGD the free soul. Now they're setting Who's up a high shell. A pick, yeah. How, how can you? Arla sets out from the crush. JJ is still here. And Xiaoshu's running the map while Demolish is going to help him and LPC get this turret. Top side not really doing too much. In the meantime, the LGD playing a cool wall. Arrows get thrown out. Arla just ulted again at a melee range. But LGD have the inside track on mid. I mean, for a top tier team, LGD are playing a little bit goofy. They're getting Sorry, EDG. I was going to say, I was going to be. LGD are right playing now. goofy at all. LGD keeping up the pressure in two lanes as well. You can see Jay's pushing down there in bot. It even looks like their wave is, is making their way up towards top side, even if slowly. And JJ might be caught out. What is he? What? What? I don't know. Looks like maybe EG just saying, hey, let's let's get to next game. Try to clap in there. Leave. Shout you. Just gets auto attack. Just runs him down. And again, we do the dance. Shout you is controlling this game. Had a good game one and. Game two is doing the same. Rooted it up. I mean, Xiaoxu's like, okay, now we go for another. Allah has to flush away. Turrets down. No defensive maneuvers. Mako now caught out as well. EDG just like pack it in. Go to game three and sit on this one because I don't know what this is, but this ain't our top team. Ain't yeah, our top this, team at all. LGD are going to end it here. What, well, yeah, what's going on? LGD. I mean, again, kudos to LGD. They're pushing the base. True. They got the kills. I mean, people like High Shop Meteor once again stepping up. LPC and Jinjao this time around having a much better game. They are going to finally take down EDG. But, you know, for every great play LGD were making, because once again, phenomenal early. That's just them on their own. Great performances. But 
the missteps from EDG were just so weird, so uncharacteristic from them. And time to come again, and as the game went later, it really did. I, I hate to say this, but it really did just look like they, they didn't know what to do. They had no idea, like, what they should be looking for. They had no idea how to hold on. And they really just thought, like, ah, let's just keep looking for picks. Let's just keep seeing if we, if we can do something. And it seemed like they felt that there was no hope left in the game, right? Because They do know what to do. They're yeah. a top-tier team. Yeah. They're, they just beat Weibo and LNG, like we said the other day. Like I, I don't understand what happened. I, 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 I have no, I have no questions about it. Well, I mean, I have many. I have too many that I have none. Um, again, LGD, you know, well played. I, I think again, giving respect to LGD for how they played the game, but EDG going in one by one by one by one by one consistently, and just that's the thing. Uh, like, like, what, did they just switch off? Did they turn the monitors off? I don't know. I'm not sure. Are they hungry? It's, Get them the food. It's not the loss. It's not the loss. And again, I want to discredit LGD's early game especially because two games in a row, LGD have bested EDG in that first 15 minutes. But it was once we started seeing like the one-by-ones, the disconnect in that that team fight around, around Baron uh, really is the highlight to me where, again, Fofo goes one way. Cassante's running down leave. And you can see the other three members. It seems like the call, the call probably was... To, to initially bait the Baron, right? They probably thought, hey, they're going to contest this first. Like, they ended up getting to finish the Baron, but in anticipation of baiting, they're probably like, hey, Fofo, look for the Emperor's Divide, look to swoop and boop the carries in, and we'll engage there. And they didn't readjust the plan to once they just allowed Cassante to freely run into the pit to be like, hey, actually, we should probably be, like, taking care of this Cassante first and then turning and then dealing with the other members. And it only mm -hmm. left them in an awkward spot. And, again, huge kudos to Shaoshu. Continue to being one of the members to watch Meteor as well for the early game setup. And LGD's bot lane for having a better showing because LGD's bot lane hasn't been an area of focus for us this split. They've been... Yeah. They've been all right. You know, they've had, like, good times and, and bad moments. They've been, you know, kind of your standard bot lane. But this time around, they were actually the ones fighting a lot of the aggressive trades in bot lane, burning summoners, and dictating the mm. pace of that 2v2. Yeah, again, like, uh, despite the composition seeming a little bit difficult, you know, seeing the gin and being like, well, now things get a little bit difficult with how the game plays out, especially when that little dip came up, you know. Past 20 minutes, uh, it was only a, a 20 amp in a game, but... That little dip, that must have been the Baron play where things were looking good at the start, but then leave left on an island where going in one by one and EDG just kind of had to throw themselves around a bit. So, I don't know, man. It's kind of crazy to see that this game came down to EDG getting picked off one by one, but also uh, it, it never really all came together bar a couple of plays. So, props to LGD. Again, EDG get playoffs with this, but also they don't deserve to win that game. So, we go to a game three and we find out if LGD could do the unthinkable.